Now there is an algorithm called trust region policy optimization which would exactly does this. We will just write that down. So trust region policy optimization trust region policy optimization abbreviated as uh, TRPO does exactly what we just described which will do the following so the objective in TRPO is simply the same expectation of the ratio times the advantage function this expectation is with respect to pi theta old subject to the k divergence between the old policy and the policy that is getting updated this should be bounded by delta where delta is a hyperparameter okay so now this is the idea where we said okay fine we will update the policy using the policy gradient theorem but we will do it slowly in the sense that we will update the policy with a constraint that the k divergence between the old policy and the policy that is being updated is bounded by delta we will not we will we will ensure that the new policy is not too much away from uh, the old policy this is what the trust region policy optimization algorithm or trpo does now the problem with this is computing and uh, implementing the scale divergence uh, and incorporating that in the policy gradient theorem is uh, is a non trivial problem okay so how do you saw how does one solve the constraint optimization problem in the case of trpo uh, is 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 not the uh, uh, objective of this particular lecture but the take home message is that solving this constraint optimization problem is non trivial therefore the policy prox proximal policy optimization algorithm ppo so solving the above constraint optimization problem optimization problem is non trivial therefore and thus ppo proposes a, a surrogate ob objective that does not explicitly compute the kl that does not compute the KL divergence explicitly right so the idea here is not to compute the KL divergence explicitly but to use another way of constraining the updates of the policy uh, by just clipping the uh, the objective function if it's just above or below a particular boundary so that is the idea that is used in ppo so let us write that so proximal policy proximal policy optimization so the ppo objective that is there is the following so let as usual we have the ratio of the densities r of theta given by pi theta uh, at 
given as t divided by pi theta old kt given as t so this is uh, the density ratio that we work with now the objective function lppo with of theta is given by so we have the expectation with respect to the old policy as usual theta old sorry so this is uh, theta old now here what is taken so recall that the actual objective that we had was the ratio rt multiplied by the advantage function right so that is what we had so instead what is computed is the following we take the minimum of rt times the advantage comma clip of rt times rt comma 1 minus epsilon comma 1 plus epsilon times the advantage function so we take the minimum of these two other than uh, taking the ratio times advantage so what is happening is let's write this down so where at is simply the estimate of the advantage of the advantage function this is common right this was there everywhere advantage function and epsilon epsilon is a small constant is it typically right, let's say 0 0.1 or 0 0.2 or something right this is a uh, user defined constant uh, which is given so what is happening is the following right so whenever the advantage is high which means that we are uh, looking at good actions right i mean whenever the advantage is better so we want the policy uh, to uh, we want to encourage the policy to move in that particular direction if that is the case then this particular objective encourages increasing uh, that particular type of behavior now that is okay that was there with uh, the previous objectives as well but now we have to constrain the policy not to go very far away from pi theta old right so how is that uh, taken care of that is taken care of by taking the minimum of these two operations now if rt which is the uh, ratio increases a lot beyond a particular point uh, defined by epsilon at both the sides what is done is that the value is clipped at 1 minus epsilon or 1 plus epsilon both above and below okay now what is happening here is by having this clip operation we are not letting the objective function which is the ratio of the the densities go beyond one so now what is this rt rt is nothing but the ratio of pi theta so look at the definition of rt it is the ratio of pi theta pi pi theta old now if this is too much greater than one which means that pi theta is exceeding pi theta old a lot so whenever that happens it will be clipped right so it will be clipped by the number that is uh, clipped to the number that is defined by uh, epsilon okay so now by having this clip operation what we are doing is we are not letting this ratio go too much far away from 1 which means that we don't want pi theta to go too much away from pi theta old so that is the idea now why do we have a minimum here is because whenever the advantage is positive we want this r theta rt to increase the new policy has to uh, be in such a way that uh, the ratio has to increase okay and whenever this at is negative we want this to decrease because we don't want that particular direction parameter direction in the policy 
to be taken because we have uh, the negative advantages. However, in both of the cases, we don't want our policy to deviate too much from pi theta old. And that's why we have clipping at both the directions, you know, which means that if it exceeds 1, then we would clip. And if it comes below 1 too much, then too we clip. So we have a clip operation which would clip the value of RT uh, if it exceeds too much below and above 1 okay which means that it is going to it is going too far away from pi theta old at both the directions okay if it's not going too much away then what we do is we just simply take rt times at which is which boils down to the previous objective that we have right so this is the uh, final uh, this is the objective the clip objective that is used in the uh, ppo algorithm now the complete ppo objective also has so let's call this as uh, PPO full. The complete PPO objective has two more terms. The first term is of course this LPPO, which is the clipped version of uh, the surrogate objective. And the second one is some alpha times the expectation of V theta of ST minus rt squared there's a third term beta times we want that to so this is a negative here this also is minus minus some beta times uh, expectation of uh, entropy h of the policy pi theta let me just explain the first objective we already saw, the first objective that we have is the um, uh, surrogate objective that we just saw. The second objective that we have which is V theta of ST minus RT squared is the loss to estimate the value function. Now, why do we need the value function? The value function is needed to estimate the advantage that is there in the objective. So, V theta of ST is the value function uh, and RT is the true computed reward or rather computed true reward. Computed true reward. Okay. So, what is this doing? This is simply solving a regression task over uh, the value function. So, we have uh, a, value, a, a neural network. Typically, this V theta is represented as a neural network and this neural network is simply estimating the uh, reward RT which is uh, obtained by the data that we already have. So, now how do we get the reward uh, is, a, is a question that we would uh, answer subsequently. Now, assuming that we have some way to compute the reward. This particular objective is regressing over the true reward to get the value function. Why do we need the value function? We need the value function to estimate the advantage function which appears in all of these uh, objective functions. So, recall that uh, the advantage function is nothing but the difference between the Q function and the value function. Both of them can be estimated using this neural network using the true reward. So, we have that as one of the objectives. The third uh, objective that is there here. So, H of pi theta is simply the entropy of the policy this is also included in the objective function because we want the uh, the uh, entire objective to ensure that the policy does enough exploration so in 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 the uh, objective that we right now had is completely dependent on the uh, ratios of uh, the, the new policy and the old policy and this is based on the rewards. We need a way to encourage policy to explore more. So, that is why people incorporate another objective, another uh, uh, function in the complete uh, objective function of PPO which is nothing but the 
entropy of the policy you know if you want we want the entropy of this to be optimized as well okay so we want the entropy the entire thing so basically the final parameters of the policy that we get is the one that would opti which would minimize this particular objective function which involves you know we want uh, there is a negative here because we have written uh, the objective function in terms of uh, minimization and you know that in the policy gradient theorem we want the reward to be maximized and therefore the negative of the surrogate objective has to be minimized and uh, this is a regression task uh, as we said that is simply regressing over uh, the uh, value network uh, to estimate the reward and the entropy also has to be uh, maximized and that's why we have a, a negative uh, sign here. So in the second term we want this to be optimized as well because we want to estimate the value function. So the total objective function has three terms which one is the uh, policy gradient optimization uh, the surrogate for that the second one is uh, the regressor over the value function the third one is the entropy of the policy right. This come takes us to the end of uh, the PPU algorithm. Once this PPU algorithm is uh, run, we would expect uh, to get a better policy, a new policy that is aligned well with the human preferences. So there is one missing piece is the, in, in the puzzle which is how do we get this uh, reward function which is required to uh, get the value function and the value function is needed to estimate the advantage function and so on right so this entire policy gradient method depends heavily on the estimate of the reward function that we have and for that we need to look at how to model this reward using uh, neural networks so what we will look at next is modeling the reward function using neural networks which is also called as the reward modeling 